Adrian Brody talks about his most iconic characters. Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Adrian Nicholas Brody, an American actor and producer, started his film career in 1988, but received worldwide recognition after starring as Vladislav Spilman in The Pianist 2002, a Roman Polensky movie. He won the Academy Award for Best Actor for The Pianist at the age of 29, becoming the youngest actor to win that category. Brody became the second American male actor after Christopher Lambert to win the Caesar Award for Best Actor. Breaking down some of his iconic characters, Adrian Brody talked to GQ magazine about his thoughts. Ladislaus Spillman, The Pianist 2002 According to him, he has been yearning to find a character with that depth and a filmmaker with their insight and named it. When preparation meets opportunity, he called that luck. Praising the filmmaker further, he said that he didn't fall into the traps that many of them fall into while telling a story, where it's a real slow burn about how these atrocities slowly became accepted in society and where bigotry and hatred grabs hold. Believing that people can still destroy evil and horror within all of that, although that is incomprehensible, the responsibility that he felt in carrying that role, which was not a very normal person and also not a heroic one. This man was slightly aloof and would never imagine witnessing all of that, getting stripped and losing all that he lost. The process, the depth that was so profound that the character still hasn't left him and keeping aside the obvious career benefits from his role, it changed his life as a man. During the transition from Spielman's lowest point, he was led to a discovery about the holiness and emptiness that one feels when they are literally deprived of sufficient nutrition. According to him, the physical metamorphosis affects one's self-esteem and energy levels, the willpower and strength. He finally concluded how many people are hungry in this world and whenever someone gets to dinner and there's still food left over, it gets thrown out. He learned to play piano, read Chopin. He did these crazy things such as selling his car, disconnecting his cell phone, putting all his stuff into storage and moving out of his apartment just to have a sense of knowing how it felt when there was no home to go back to. When he finally found his connection to music, thanks to Chopin, it played a wonderful distraction from the hunger for him. It was a practical task to do, the research to understand how to portray this man, which he did wonderfully. Peter, the Darjeeling Limited, 2007 he started with applauding Wes Anderson, who embraced the comedic sensibility within him. He always thought he didn't have a lot of show in this field, partially because it was not given any opportunity to show it. The movie was shot in India. He had fun doing the movie as he lived in India together with the actors, and since he was an only child, he had fun with them just like a bunch of brothers would. He had a very free experience as they shot on a moving train with no makeup, no wardrobe process, just them and their acting. They had to get on a train at 6 in the morning. They basically shot the movie one way five hours or so and then shot on the way back. He said there was a looseness in the film because of India's inspiration in all of them. He had to wear glasses in the movie which were part of the story, the structure in almost everything but the hilarious part was that he couldn't really see through glasses and so every time he had to read, he took off those glasses to read the script and then put it back on. After much practice, he was able to control his eyebrows, and so the glasses could fall whenever he commanded. It helped him become closer to Peter's character. Overall, it was great fun for them and a totally different experience. Dimitri, The Grand Budapest Hotel, 2014 After working with Wes Anderson in the Darjeeling Limited, they developed friendship among them. Adrian now knows what Wes is looking for. He even understands himself much better and knows what battles he can't fight and so he doesn't indulge in them and he can go right to what Wes likes, because now he knows what exactly he wants and there's nothing wrong with that. Dimitri was a villain, a jerk. It was fun for him to rebel in being such a distinctly bad character. They shot this in Germany, praising Anderson. He said that Wes created such a wonderful atmosphere during their communal dinners. It felt good to meet all the wonderful actors, writers, or just anyone's friend. He made it look like a trope where they got to know each other and that was a wonderful thing. According to him, Wes Anderson keeps honing in on it, on something that no one does quite as authentic and just because of that, it's visible in every frame of the movie. Luca Changrita, Peaky Blinders 2017 According to Adrian, he never desired to do television, although he loved films. He only started doing TV projects because when Stephen Knight came for him to that role, he was so intrigued with it that he couldn't deny him. 
Luca Cengrita, in Adrian's words, is like a champ. He said he longed to play such a character who had these different kinds of flavors. He had his first scene with Tom Hardy, a beloved actor in the UK. He worked with great actors like Cillian Murphy, Helen McCrory, and obviously Tom Hardy, where he needed to hold his own place. It was fun for him, and he got to play around with a genre which he grew up loving, which can be a little playful and yet sinister, but it was all good. And that's all for today, folks. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any amazing videos from us.